Are you often wondering about the correct linking word to express a contrast? Are you uncertain how to use words such as although, however, or despite? Then join me in this lesson for a review of the most common linking words we use to express a contrast. Hello and welcome everyone, this is me at AngloLink. Today we're going to review words and expressions that join two contrasting facts. These are words and phrases like although, even though, however, nevertheless, despite, and in spite of. We will look at how they join two clauses to each other and also which ones are more appropriate for spoken English and which ones are more appropriate for written English. We'll finish with a gap filling exercise so you can test your assimilation. By the end of the lesson, you will have mastered the use of these linking words both in spoken and written English. So, when you're ready, let's begin. Linking words of concession and contrast. We can divide the most common linking words and expressions of concession and contrast into four groups. Firstly, coordinating conjunctions, but, yet, and yet. Subordinating conjunctions, though, although, even though, while, and whereas. Conjunctive adverbs, still, however, nevertheless, nonetheless. And finally, prepositions, despite and in spite of. Okay, let's start by looking at coordinating conjunctions, but, yet, and yet. As you remember, coordinating conjunctions join two main or independent clauses to each other. A coordinating conjunction usually comes after a comma between the two clauses. The most common word to link two sentences expressing a concession or a contrast is but. But is widely used in spoken and informal English. For example, it's reasonably priced, but no one buys it. This is a concession. Or, A is reasonably priced, but B is rather expensive. This is a contrast. To express a concession in formal and written English, use yet or and yet. They're also more emphatic. It's reasonably priced, yet no one purchases it. It is reasonably priced, and yet no one purchases it. OK, let's look at subordinating conjunctions of concession, which are though, although, and even though. As you know, subordinating conjunctions join a main or independent clause and a subordinate or dependent clause to each other. It's reasonably priced, but no one buys it, but is a coordinating conjunction. Let's replace it. No one buys it, though, or although, or even though it's reasonably priced. Remember that if you start with the subordinate clause, you must separate the two clauses with a comma. Though, or although, or even though it's reasonably priced, comma, no one buys it. Though can also come at the end of the sentence. In this case, use a full stop. It's reasonably priced. No one buys it, though. Remember that though is informal and common in spoken English. Although and even though are used both in spoken and written English. Even though is more emphatic than although. Right, let's have a look at subordinating conjunctions of contrast, 
which are while and whereas. So remember our sentence with but. A is reasonably priced, but B is rather expensive. As you remember, that's a contrast. Let's change to while or whereas. B is rather expensive, while or whereas A is reasonably priced. Or, while or whereas A is reasonably priced, comma, B is rather expensive. Right, time to look at conjunctive adverbs of concession, which are still, however, nevertheless, and nonetheless. These adverbs perform the same task as a conjunction to join two main clauses to each other. You can separate the two clauses either with a semicolon or with a full stop. Full stop is better when the first clause is long and make sure you put a comma after the conjunctive adverb. It's reasonably priced, semicolon, still or however, no one buys it. It is reasonably priced and it is extremely high quality. Full stop. However, nevertheless, nonetheless, no one purchases it. Still is informal and more appropriate for speaking. However, can be used for both speaking and writing. And nevertheless and nonetheless are more formal than however and therefore more appropriate for formal writing and presentations. Right. Let's look at prepositions of concession, in spite of and despite. As you know, these expressions are not conjunctions, they are compound prepositions. Therefore, they need to be followed by a noun or the gerund form of a verb, not by a clause. Let's make that clear. So here is the sentence, no one purchases it in spite of or despite. And now you cannot say it is reasonably priced. You cannot use a clause. You have to change to a noun, for example, in spite of or despite its reasonable price. Or you need to change to the gerund form. Let's have a look at that. For example, there are very few buyers in spite of or despite. Once again, we cannot use a clause. It is reasonably priced. Let's use the gerund form. In spite of or despite it being reasonably priced. Remember that if you start with a prepositional phrase, you must separate the two clauses with a comma. In spite of or despite. It's reasonable price, comma, no one purchases it. Or, in spite of or despite it being reasonably priced, comma, there are very few buyers. Despite and in spite of are synonyms and are more common in written English. Okay, a couple of notes. The first note is that when the subject of the two clauses are different, you must leave the second subject before the gerund. For example, the employee was promoted in spite of making so many mistakes. It's the employee who was promoted and it's the employee who made the mistakes. So you don't need to repeat the employee. However, the employee was promoted in spite of his mistakes causing so many problems. Here you have two different subjects, the employee and his mistakes. And both subjects have to appear in your sentence with the second subject appearing before the verb in the gerund form. Now, be careful that if the second subject is a pronoun, you can use either the object pronoun or the possessive adjective. For example, the employee was promoted although they were not happy with his performance. The employee was promoted 
in spite of them or in spite of their not being happy with his performance. Right? And a second note. If you prefer to use a clause, you can add the expression the fact that. No one purchases it, despite the fact that it is reasonably priced. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Let's move on to exercises. Use the linking word in brackets to formulate the same idea as the original sentence containing but. For example, he's quite young, but he's very mature. Use although. He is very mature, although he's quite young. Or you can start with although. Although he's quite young, comma, he's very mature. Okay, let's start with coordinating conjunctions, yet and yet. Number one, he's a doctor, but he smokes heavily, yet. He's a doctor, yet he smokes heavily. Number two, she was smiling, but she looked sad. And yet, she was smiling, and yet she looked sad. Okay, moving on to subordinating conjunctions of concession. Number three, I slept well, but I'm tired. Though. I'm tired though I slept well. Though I slept well, I'm tired. I slept well. I'm tired though. Number four. The discussion went on for hours, but no conclusion was reached. Even though. No conclusion was reached, even though the discussion went on for hours. Even though the discussion went on for hours, no conclusion was reached. Number five. We had never met, but he looked familiar. Although. He looked familiar, although we had never met. Although we had never met, he looked familiar. Number six. John is persuaded easily, but Sally can be hard to convince. While. Sally can be hard to convince, while John is persuaded easily. While John is persuaded easily, Sally can be hard to convince. Number seven. Yorkshire is way up north, but Kent is a county in the south of England. Whereas. Kent is a county in the south of England, whereas Yorkshire is way up north. Whereas Yorkshire is way up north, Kent is a county in the south of England. Moving on to conjunctive adverbs of concession. Number eight. 
I've read this paragraph several times, but I don't get it. Still. I've read this paragraph several times. Still, I don't get it. Number 9. They have reviewed a large number of cases, but there are many more left to do. However, they have reviewed a large number of cases, however, there are many more left to do. Number 10. The bank already has five branches in this town, but they are setting up two more. Nevertheless, the bank already has five branches in this town. Nevertheless, they are setting up two more. Okay, moving on to prepositions of concession. Number 11. Their age gap is big, but their marriage is successful. Despite. Their marriage is successful, despite their big age gap. Despite their big age gap, their marriage is successful. Their marriage is successful, despite their age gap being big. Or, despite their age gap being big, their marriage is successful. And finally, number 12. They ran an expensive campaign, but she didn't get elected. In spite of. She didn't get elected in spite of their expensive campaign. Or, in spite of their expensive campaign, she didn't get elected. Using the gerund, she didn't get elected in spite of them or in spite of their running an expensive campaign. Switching round, in spite of them or their running an expensive campaign, she didn't get elected. Right, that's the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. As you know, you can now go to our website, anglolink.com, for further lessons and exercises. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson. Bye now.